The script actually came to Agbo, um, Joe and Anthony Russo's company, as a spec back in, I think it was like 2019. It's been a while now. And um, ultimately, I've worked with Joe and Anthony Russo for many years um, uh, at their company. And, and I started off as their assistant back in 2010. And I've produced movies with them um, after I sort of graduated from that position. And it came in and um, the Russos were familiar with Aaron and I's um, work. We had done a couple of short films and they see, they saw our short film, The Bride, which is basically a, a, you know, a horror spaghetti Western set in Iraq, which is, you know, a sort of a huge horror genre mashup, but was, you know, we tried to take some big swings there and they had encouraged us to find something we wanted to direct um, and, and that Agbo would, would help us get it made. Um, so this movie came in um, that JJ wrote, um, and there was the initial hook of, of, of a demon that plays um, horrific, twisted versions of childhood games. We're like, okay, well, there's a, an amazing hook there, uh, uh, obviously, and it is sort of like the elevator pitch sort of sells itself. Um, but what Aaron and I wanted to do was to humanize it, find a relatable endpoint, and what we really did a lot of our work with was was the mythology, but also. Um, the characters, you know, we wanted them to be relatable. We looked at films like mid '90s and Lady Bird and Eighth Grade. We were like, okay, what 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 do teenagers sound like? What are the kinds of issues that they deal with? Um, and then another touch point for us was was ET, and specifically the scene around the table in the beginning of the movie with with the family and the mother. It was like, okay, that that is an authentic portrayal of a family that we we strive for. So we spent a lot a lot of work on the characters uh, in their dynamics, specifically the siblings. I think we got what we got us really excited about the script was this combination of genres I mean of com coming of age with sort of the two subgenres we're at really which is like possession and also sort of a slasher movie to a certain degree and so for us we love we love genre because we feel like you can smuggle you know interesting ideas and meaningful ideas into genre movies and I think because we're we are writer directors from doing our shorts you know we really took a lot of ownership of the script of going okay now let's personalize it in addition to sort of not just what we're going to do with the genres, but like Ari was saying, with the characters and the family. And so we like to say it's like if one half of it is, it's like Amblin meets John Carpenter, I think was like our, our <laughs> sort of tonal mantra, you know, to try and, and keep this tension between something that's very heartfelt and, and, and naturalistic, really, because now everybody says Amblin is idealistic. But when you go back and watch E.T. through the lens of when it was released, it's pretty real. You know, it's not actually that nostalgic and idealistic uh and then Carpenter, it's really Halloween and this idea of just relentless Michael Myers, you know, coming after everything you love. And so those were really the two things that we were like, OK, this is what we'd like to play with as filmmakers, you know, as well as sort of the personal element of it. I think there are, there are a few things. I think they're going to be surprised about the, the, the heart of the movie. I think they'll be surprised that it is it really is like a coming of age horror film, um, what we tried to do that, um, you know, not a lot of movies necessarily do is there's this parallel journey of Joe, played by um, Ben Ainsworth, of, you know, he is he's moving through the fire of trauma, basically. Um, there's the, the trauma that the rift in the family after the dad has left, um, an abusive father has left. Um, and we parallel that with, uh, with um, the demon, uh, Daniel. Um, and his traumatic journey, and I think what we do, we, we really try to humanize our antagonist at the end. Um, and you know, I'm not not trying to spoil anything, but ultimately, what happens to him, you should feel conflicted about as an audience member, e even though he he's waged this sort of terror on on our characters, uh, his or origin, his his past, his story, and ultimately, what happens to him is 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 tragic in its own right. So these parallel journeys of these two boys that are, are that are of similar similar ages i think is something that we really put a lot of work into and, and perhaps would, would surprise audiences aaron i don't know if you have anything to add to that yeah no i think as co-directors our, our biggest job is like modulating the feeling we want to try and elicit from the audience and i think the at the end when you sort of reveal who the demon is you know we like Ari was saying we want that emotion to resonate but also even our, our absolute ending with Marcus is like trying to let the audience know that okay now we're actually back in reality and and no there's no off the hook in movie land you know and that that was something very important to us is trying to have the you know maintain the emotional punch of the movie you know and, and not just sort of have an off the hook ending you know. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, Ben Ainsworth was someone that was brought to us by our casting director, Jessica Sherman. Um, and I think she, she got him, you know, even though we were a small movie and we, we potentially couldn't pay to have an actor fly in from the UK, uh, we absolutely fell in love with Ben when we saw his tape. Um, he was funny. He was uh, he was like uh, his performance was extremely emotional, and he hit every beat honestly. And, and ultimately, when we when we had a director session with him, we just found he was like a little assassin when it came to acting. Like he just hit every emotional beat really really well. Um, and Ben is, you know, uh, extremely prepared. Um, you know, and it was no different than working with Acer and Natalia when it came to Ben. We cast him knowing full well that we we needed to cast a, a kid in this role for the emotional heart of the film, and it was going to affect sort of how we shot because we only had eight hours with him. We were going to have to use a stand-in and, and, and a double in some places, but it was you know with Ben's enormous talent, it was it was very very worth it. Um, and you know, if it was just a bunch of teens and there, there was no you know kid under 13, we felt the movie and its identity would have been totally different. We would have lost the emotional um, core of the film, that, which is that parallel with E.T. First of all, we were so lucky that, that Natalia and Asa responded to the script in the way they did, you know, because I think we really wanted them both to, to take on parts that they had never really done before. You know, I mean, Natalia, you know, is, is obviously famous for Nancy, but Nancy is sort of, you know, the girl next door. And Billy is really kind of more of an acerbic, edgy, sometimes entitled young girl who obviously comes through that arc. And Asa, who's normally playing this warm kid on sex education, you know, we wanted to try and cast him in a whole different light. And so, Basically, you know, working with them, they were such different actors, but they both just brought so much in terms of collaborators, because as Ari was saying, the schedule was so difficult. And so we realized immediately, because we got a week of rehearsal with them, because we had such a tight schedule, which was really a blessing, and that Natalia and Asa both, we were not going to have to worry about, you know, dialing their performances. It was just, you know, we were, it was really, really impressive to watch, you know, whereas Natalia and Asa just embody the characters, uh, you know, both emotionally and also bring endless ideas, you know, endless questions, which we love. You know, Ari and I love working with actors maybe more than than anything else, you know, so it was it was a real joy to get actors as, as good as them. Also, shout out to uh, Laurel Marsden, Colton Stewart and Annabeth Gish, uh, mm -hmm. who were like just amazing as well. Annabeth, who played our mother, who was in for maybe two, three days and literally stole the kitchen scene. Um, Colton Stewart, who plays Billy's boyfriend, um, who was just like incredible opposite to her. And then Laurel Marsden, who, who is just like hysterical and a true pleasure on set and kept us in stitches and also just a really, really amazing actor as well. That was in service to working with with the Russos. I mean, I think you know, obviously, there's been talks over the years that the Russos would get back in more involved with with Marvel, but um, it doesn't look like that's happening in the near future. You know, we have our company Agbo um, that started in 2017, 2018, um, and you know, the guys took all of their their knowledge and relationships from the Marvel world to to create a company that that really focuses on big IP and world building. So I think, you know, you see a lot of original IP coming out of um, Agbo and, you know, the goal is to create, a, you know, a, a studio in the vein of like a bad robot or Imagine, which is what we, you know, strive to become. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that we'll do movies that, that feel, you know, Marvel in mold, but that are original. And I think, um, you know, obviously our bread and butter so far has been big action movies like Extraction and, and The Gray Man. And I'll, you know, I think I'll, I'll continue to produce here at Agbo while Aaron and I continue to um, write and direct as well and look for our, our next project as a follow-up to All Fun and Games.